Hi, my name is Jeremy Klein. I'm the Polyjet Technical Trainer at Stratasys, here to introduce the J55 Polyjet Printer. If you're used to our old Polyjet products, this is gonna definitely be new and refreshing. What excites me about the J55 and introducing this new printer is we've made such a huge leap in our overall user interface, in our overall maintenance schedule. How you operate the printer, how you interface with the printer is a much smoother, cleaner operation. It feels very natural, it feels very intuitive. What excites me as a trainer is I see that this is gonna be something that's easy for me to train technicians on. They're gonna be able to pick up this item very fast, be able to service it easily. The thought process from the ground up has been not only to produce a product that's easy for a customer to use, but also is easy to service. What I see from this is a very reliable platform, which means more uptime, more reliable operation, and seeing customers being able to truly rely on this printer and know when they go to print, it's going to be there, it's going to operate. Another big advantage to having a rotational tray is that since that motor is moving at a consistent velocity, we don't get the telltale sound of a motor stopping and starting. When we have a Cartesianal printer, the block is moving left to right. We need to accelerate that and decelerate that at each end of travel. That generates a fair bit of noise in the room. With the tray rotating at a constant velocity, we don't get that acceleration, deceleration sound, which means we get a much quieter working environment that is gonna make it much more comfortable to live in an office environment as opposed to a machine shop or industrial environment. So with this machine, the way it's designed, the way it's built, it is very easy to service, and service is gonna be less required on it due to some of the components. So we can point to the LED UV module. This doesn't require calibration by either the customer or the technician. It is something that's designed to run the life of the printer instead of having to change bulbs constantly. This is gonna improve uptime for their customers. It's going to improve their efficiency. You're not having technicians on site or their operators doing these maintenance items. They're already taken care of for them and will run the life of the printer. Looking at our user interface, if you are familiar with our FDM product, the F123 series, this should seem very familiar. If you're familiar with our older Polyjet product, this is definitely gonna be a new and fresh interface for you. So we start out on our home screen. This is our base screen to tell us what's going on currently with the printer and what job is either next in the queue or uh, what job is currently printing. So you'll see those displayed there. Down next tab, we're gonna see our actual print queue. So as you stack up jobs in the queue, they will show up in here. This can be managed directly from the printer, so you don't need to go back to grab cab print in order to change order of things in the queue. From there, we get into our materials tab. We have two different views available in the materials tab. Here we have our individual cartridge view, which is gonna read out which cartridges are being are active and which cartridges are not. Also give you an individual weight on all of those. The other view is our channels view. This will give us our total weights of cartridges in the machine. Next, we have our tools window. Here's where you're gonna find basic settings, information about the printer, as well as all of our service wizards. Service wizards are accessed through the wizards menu, are all listed in here in alphabetical order, and are available for access. Just select the wizard and it'll walk you through that process. Down below, we have our warnings and alerts. Warnings are gonna show up in red. Alerts will show up in yellow. Yellow indicates something that needs attention but is not stopping the printer from working. Red will indicate as an alert that'll tell you that there is a stoppage. You need to pay attention to that and acknowledge that. From here, you can also clear out these warnings. You can either select them individually and clear them individually, or you can go up to the clear warnings and clear all warnings to clear out all of the tabs. For J55, we have our new cartridge design. You can see the branding on one side here. It tells you what material it has in the cartridge. On the reverse side here, we have our safety data sheet is enclosed in here in several different languages. The new design is set up a lot like our J850 cartridge, a single blow molded cartridge with a outlet at the bottom for gravity feed and an air inlet at the top of the cartridge to allow air in to prevent the cartridge from collapsing. Similar to the J850 cartridge with one difference that we have on the front here, a different genuine material chip that utilizes pogo pins and contact as opposed to RFID like our older machines, which should provide a little bit more reliable service. So with the new cartridge design, we have new corks and septums in here that allow this not to leak. Um, they are able to be stored more conveniently, either sitting down on their side or standing up, depending on if you have them in the box or not. And 
unlike the desktop cartridges that are required to be put in facing down, which makes them susceptible to leakage, these are set in horizontally and slide in like our bigger box machines do. The cartridge bays themselves, we have 12 cartridge bays total, so five material and one support. Two bays per materials channel. So you're starting on the left, we typically have Vero white loaded, then either Vero clear or Vero black, Vero yellow, Vero magenta, Vero cyan, and then support. They're all vertically aligned, so you have two cartridges of each that allow it to hot swap so that you can run 2.2 kilos of material without having to change cartridges. The cartridges are retained in by a clip here, spring-loaded clip, insert with the septum down, in, they seat in place and hold in place. Below our material cartridges, we have our waste container. It is a typical bag in a box that you find on our large box machines. Uh, large capacity, so it should reduce on the number of times you need to swap that. Below the waste container, we have our disaster pan. This encompasses the entire liquid system, so any leaks that may occur in the liquid system will be caught by this pan. It then has a sump in the pan itself that has a float sensor. As if we have a leak in the system, it will make its way down to that float sensor. Once it floats up, it will stop the machine, which prevents leakage on the floor. So with J55, we're also introducing our Pro Aero module. This is a air filtration and exhaust module for the J55 unit. Simple operation connects to the machine is controlled by the J55 and then powered by a typical 110 volt outlet. Plug in, you have very simple basic controls on the front here to adjust fan speed. It's currently running at a typical setting that is necessary for most printing conditions. Can be adjusted using the arrows here, push and hold. I'm gonna spin it up to maximum speed here so we can get an idea of what the loudest that's going to be is. So this is it running at its highest setting. This would only be really necessary in extremely warm environments um, and not your typical running point. Bring it back down to typical, which is setting three is what we'll typically see running in most environments. Give it a second here for everything to spool down. And this is a more typical level that you're gonna see in your office environment. Pretty unobtrusive sitting in the room running. Service on the Pro Aero machine is fairly simple. This will need to be done twice a year. So replacing the element twice a year. You want to open up the latches after shutting off the unit, remove the top cover, and then you can remove the filter element itself. The filter element itself consists of a particulate filter on the top, a carbon filter that's inside on the bottom to remove the scent of the printer, and then a HEPA filter down below that to further purify the air before being exhausted out the back of the unit. Putting it back together or changing the filter is simple enough. Drop the new filter element in. Replace your top cover. Close your latches. And turn on the unit to bring it back into service. Now we'll be covering the routine cleaning wizard on this machine. This wizard will be utilized to do our basic cleaning between prints or daily as needed. So this is gonna allow us to clean the heads, the service station, the roller, and the UV lens all in one wizard, saving you time overall on your maintenance schedule. To start out, we'll clean the heads. Just like any of our printers, you want to feel for the step in the head and come in and wipe just forward of that step, wipe towards the end and off the end. Get off that, come back, again, check for the step, make sure you're forward of it, wipe forward. That'll clean out the heads themselves. You'll do this and repeat this until you're happy with the surface is clean. From there, we go to our service station. The service station has a bale that runs down here to hold it open. Just pull that bale forward and up out of the way. That'll lower down our service station where we have our all fire trap and then our wiper is down inside here. Go in, wipe the wiper off to verify that there's not any debris there. We can close it back up, push this back until it snaps and that will get that set. Next, we wanna to get to the roller. The roller is spinning during this wizard, so we just need to come in with our cleaning cloth and run from back to front here, just slowly moving along the length of this as it turns. You wanna make sure if you're feeling any grittiness or anything like that, that you may need to make a return pass. You wanna make sure the roller is nice and smooth. After that, we have our UV LED lens here. We just go through, make a couple wipes on that. Again, verify we don't have any buildup along the lens itself. 
Once the UV lens is clean, that will complete the routine cleaning wizard on the printer. Here we're going to show the print head calibration. So we're going to go into our tools menu, select wizards, and then we want to move down to print head calibration. Open this up. First thing it's going to do is give you a description of the wizard itself. We hit start. Please wait. And we have two options here. We can either print transparency for analysis or do load calibration parameters. We want to print transparency for analysis. Hit next. From here, confirm that the build tray is clear and clean. Yes, it is. Door is closed. Check those boxes. Hit next. At this point, it's going to go ahead and print a frame for us to place a transparency on. That's it. J55 is revolutionary in the fact that we didn't carry over a whole lot from our original Polyjet line. Started with a blank slate and designed a printer around our customers' needs. What excites me for our customers is that this is going to be something that's easy to operate. It's going to be something that intuitively you're going to be able to walk up to and go, yep, I can figure out how to work this. Should make things very simple for them to run the machine on a day in and day out basis.